Let's connect the Go 2 to the Insta360 app and then I'll show you how to use your phone as a remote control for the Go 2. Just a quick heads up, I am using the iPhone 12 Pro Max, so if you're an Android user, then the steps you see in this video might be a little bit different for you. I also highly recommend that you check out Insta360's phone compatibility page and make sure your phone is on there. And if your phone is on there and you're still having performance issues, then it could be because of the other apps on your phone that are clogging up your phone's resources or maybe your phone is low on storage. Now let's connect the Go 2 to the Insta360 app. So on your phone, go to the App Store, search for Insta360 and tap the download button. While it's downloading, make sure your phone's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is turned on. Once the app has finished downloading, open it. Open your charging case with the Go 2 inside. Accept all the notifications. Tap yes. The app will automatically find the Go 2. Tap connect. Tap the record button to link the Go 2 to the app. Tap join. Tap OK and the connection is complete. If you want to remove the floating help button, go to settings, help button settings, and check the help button off. Now let's customize the action button so you can choose which photo or video mode to activate when the go to is outside of the charging case. Go to settings and tap button settings. Quick capture one and quick capture two will activate a photo or video mode when the go to is off. Quick capture one is a single tap of the action button and quick capture two is a quick double tap of the action button. Single press and double press will activate a photo or video mode when the go to is on. To turn on the go to, simply hold down the action button until the indicator turns blue. A single press is a single tap of the action button and a double press is a quick double tap of the action button. I will set quick capture one to pro video mode because I use this mode the most. For the highest video quality, I will use the settings 1440p at 30 frames per second, 16 by nine. And I set the capture time to 10 minutes so I can capture up to 10 minutes of video at a time. I prefer to film short bursts of footage so the file sizes are small and transferring files becomes more manageable. And if you want to get through a day of filming, I would rather have lots of short videos from throughout the day rather than a few long videos before the storage fills up. I will set Quick Capture 2 to standard photo mode, single press to slow motion mode, and double press to HDR video mode. and then tap save. You can use your phone as a remote control for the Go 2 inside or outside the charging case. Tap the yellow camera icon and you will see a live preview of what the camera can see. On the bottom, you can switch between video and photo mode. Tap mode to switch between the different video modes. You can swipe left and right to reveal more options. Let's take a closer look at pro video mode as an example. I highly recommend you record all your video in this mode because you get more flexibility in editing when reframing and better stabilization. I will switch the resolution to 1440p for the highest video quality possible. The aspect ratio in pro video mode doesn't really matter because in editing you can choose whether you want your final video to be 16x9 or 9x16. The only difference it makes here is whether you want to see a live preview in 16x9 or 9x16. Field of view is like zoom, a wide field of view is zoomed out and has fisheye distortion, and a narrow field of view is zoomed in and has zero fisheye distortion. The field of view can be changed in editing, so the only difference it makes here is whether you want to see a live preview with a wide field of view or a narrow field of view. Most of the time I film videos at 30 frames per second, but if you see light flickering in your video, then try 25 or 50 frames per second instead. The 24 and 25 frames per second option will be added in a future firmware update. If you want to record videos which are ready to upload onto social media straight away, then I recommend you use the standard or vivid color profile. Standard color works best in low light, indoor lighting, cloudy and sunny weather, and vivid color is specifically optimized for bright sunny weather. I live in the UK, which is more cloudy than sunny, so I tend to stick with the standard color profile. And you can change the capture time. The big advantage of using your phone as a remote control is that you have access to manual exposure settings. Tap the exposure settings icon, tap auto, 
and tap manual exposure mode. Now you can choose the ISO and shutter speed of your choice and you can set a manual white balance. Tap the yellow button to start a recording. Tap the yellow button again to stop the recording. Tap the thumbnail and you can preview the video you just shot. If you want to compose your shot then in settings you can turn on the grid and you can also turn on the histogram to check your exposure. The layout is similar for photos. Tap mode to switch between the different photo modes. You can enable RAW to take RAW photos as well as JPEG. Choose your auto or manual exposure settings and take a photo. Now that you know how to connect your GoTo to your phone and use your phone as a remote, head over to the next video and I'll see you there.